Um, so let me continue the program by introducing uh, our first IBM speaker. Uh, Nancy Birchfield has more than 30 years at, at IBM, is a distinguished engineer, uh, IBM Academy of Technology and Leadership team member, and a certified IT consultant in data center management and optimization for IBM Global Technology Services, Delivery Technology and Engineering. Um, she has a great deal of experience and expertise. Um, she actually has an MBA from UCI, so another uh, UCI alum, so very excited to have her back here today. Um, and she's going to talk to us about um, their new, uh, IBM's new software development toolkit, software development for the application economy, DevOps, and Bluemix. Nancy. Thank you, Helen. It is great to uh, be back to UCI. It's been uh, quite a while, and obviously there's a lot of growth that has occurred. Is, it, is this on? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, a lot of growth that occurred, but uh, really exciting to be back. I, after I um, did my MBA here, then I had uh, the occasion to work with uh, some of the professors at the School of Business. We did uh, research projects together. Back then, at the time, um, the question of what's the value of IT was on top of mind. You know, nobody even thinks about that. Now, nobody even thinks about business without thinking about technology in the same, but that was uh, one of, you know, the top, thank you, one of the, uh, the top uh, questions. And then I also uh, um, spent a couple of years as a adjunct professor doing systems design and analysis. So I'm really excited to talk to you today about what is happening with um, software development in the world that we're in. Um, talk to you about software development in the application economy. The um, two areas, uh, it, it's a broad topic obviously, but uh, two areas that I wanted to talk about is dev what we call DevOps. DevOps is really putting together the term uh, development and operations and talking about how those, how that needs to occur in this application economy. And then uh, the cloud, obviously uh, technology plays a big role in enabling DevOps and so uh, we, we put those two together. Obviously in 20 minutes we can't go into detail, but let me set the context. So you're all very familiar with uh, the availability of apps. You probably are creators of a lot of the apps that are out there. You're probably, you know, generating your own little business off of what you do with the, your coding uh, skills, or, or you might. So there's apps out there for just about everything. Uh, and the cartoon uh, here is just taking that to one step further, but, you know, passing, uh, you know, condiments on the table, hold on, there's an app for that, it'll be easier, because that's kind of our mentality today. The other major uh, shift that is going on is, uh, the, uh, before even the, uh, the application economy, we move from more the product type of economy to a services economy. And as we make this transition to application, what is now happening is the experience is the new product. It, you know, it's not so much about the products. So you go out and you don't really focus so much on maybe buying the car. In fact, is the car actually made of metal and plastic? Or is it maybe really a Pandora music service client device? And you could just take about any kind of tangible product and it's being wrappered with services and it's that experience that the consumer or the business or the employee has that creates the value for, you know, or motivates that the consumer or the customer or that employee to actually uh, use that uh, product with its uh, integrated service. So experience matters, it's tr it trumps uh, product or traditional feature function. And then the other uh, force that is occurring in this new uh, world is the need for speed. Um, may, many of you may be in uh, computer science or informatic uh, majors. How many? Uh, well, we probably don't have time for kind of uh, the question. I, I prefer a more interactive, but many uh, computer science majors expect to go work for a technology company like maybe IBM or maybe like uh, Microsoft, etc. And one of the big technology companies. So, which would you think has more software developers? J.P. Morgan Chase or a technology company like Google? The answer is J.P. Morgan Chase. Which ones have more, say, uh, technologists, you know, that w focus on uh, more hardware technology uh, type of stuff? Um, J.P. Morgan Chase or somebody like Microsoft? 
turns out to be actually Microsoft. I mean, I'm sorry, <laughs> turns out to be J.P. Morgan Chase, a bank, a financial services. Why? That business, you know, depends on its technology. You don't have a business in financial services if you don't have the investment in, in technology. And it, it's changing so rapidly, that's the need for speed. So every business is going to be a software business, whether they recognize that or not. And, and that's good news for students that are in this field, like yourself, uh, because that's a tremendous amount of opportunity, tremendous amount of creativity. The goal is, I change it now, I was saying our title was software development. Software development really is only a portion of what we think businesses need to build as a, an enterprise capability. They need a software delivery uh, capability that is very fast, very agile, and that enables them to be uh, what we call a composable business. So that that business can rapidly reconfigure itself, et cetera, based on, oh, sorry, wrong pointer, uh, based on, you know, various, um, uh, technologies that are coming out, whether it be uh, mobile and social and cloud, et cetera. Now, Internet uh, of Things, you know, is is just starting to uh, perk up. So, to always be able to configure yourself. So, what does that kind of uh, development, or s more appropriately, software delivery? What are the kinds of characteristics that that uh, capability needs to have? That's what I have here at the top. Is needs to be continually uh, innovating. And I like uh, Andre's, you know, sketching, uh, and it'll be interesting to see uh, what Rational thinks, because our Rational Software Architect also has that sketching. It was a very important element of how we go about, uh, you know, designing software and ultimately uh, developing to have a sketch capability like that. The other thing, I'm kind of kicking myself, we're going to be talking about uh, Bluemix, uh, but you may have uh, seen, because there have been a lot of press on IBM design thinking, we have a huge big focus in making big investments on kind of reestablishing uh, IBM's present and, and expertise in design. Um, and so students are being uh, attracted to come into internships. We run uh, design boot camps throughout all the different uh, product uh, you know, groups within IBM, within our hardware, within our software. And actually, Bluemix, I had a picture of uh, the, the method that they use, which is um, used as a bunch of yellow stickies. So it's a board that is Bluemix, which is what you, you know, and, and if you look, if you saw the details of the actual uh, sticky board, it, it's kind of a mess like one of the charts that, that uh, Andre had up, but that's what uh, Bluemix started from. So we, we totally agree that you need to have that kind of, uh, you know, ability to rapidly collaborate with one another, change your design. You really don't spend a lot of time with formalization. You're getting a, a high level outline so that you can incrementally deliver, you know, uh, rapid new releases to the, uh, the market. The motto is, you know, fail fast. Another uh, one is continuous delivery. So you want to fail fast. You want to continuously put out innovations and have the ability to always have what we would say releasable code. You don't go through a release cycle anyway. Code is always going to be fully releasable. That's a, uh, an important element of, of um, DevOps. And then finally, that feedback. Uh, and especially in uh, the mobile application space, you know, you're going to lose your users if you're, if you're not understanding what they like, what they don't like, and turning around your uh, application based on that feedback. So those are kind of the key characteristics of it. I'm going to move a little faster so we can uh, have um, a, a more focused discussion on um, Jazz Hub and uh, Bluemix, which are key enablers to this. Here's the perspective of today's challenge. In, in most of uh, the companies that are out there, they are, they are not this uh, agile, fast, incremental software delivery capability. It's more, they may have gotten to what we would call water agile fall, so kind of a combination of hang-ons from the waterfall method to adopting some pieces of agile, but, you know, and so it looks something like this, and, oops, I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, it looks something like this, it has these kind of uh, steps to it, but then the problem with it is that there's different um, camps along that sequence, 
development thinks they're done. When they're done with the code and they drop it into the, uh, the SEM, I'm done. Let the build engineers deal with it. Then uh, you get it over to the, usually a lot of companies have a centralized QA department that's doing all the, uh, the integration testing. Development says, I'm done. Tester says, I'm done. To emphasize that, this is the problem. <laughs> so, you know, it worked in tests, ops problems now. I, I deal in infrastructure. So I, I'm in uh, the out strategic outsourcing business of uh, IBM. And so a lot of our main focus in services infrastructure or this operations piece, and we get this all the time. So uh, well understand that, and, and, it, and it hurts both, even as an outsourcing provider. You know, we, we need to be able to collaborate with the, uh, the customer's uh, application developers. We have to be together, and this is a lot of what I'm spending my time on, is how do you do this DevOps kind of integration, tightly integrated, continuous, everything, et cetera, when you have two different companies, right? And, and you have contractual obligations uh, in there as well. The other thing is, uh, I'll point out down here on the bottom, is we um, hired uh, Forrester to do a, uh, a recent study, actually, we just published this in October, looking at the cycle time of this, you know, uh, software development uh, pipeline. And, and so you can see the spread there. Most are still measuring their cycle times in, you know, quarters, which translates really to more closely to years and months versus where we need to be, which is more like days. So there are some out there that are starting to achieve that. And actually, uh, Rational, I'm going to share, uh, share with you some of the progress we, they've made in adopting this. So what is this DevOps? I don't have time to go into all the pieces, but some of the key messages that you should take away on DevOps is all of the things that you saw lined up you know, on the, uh, the single pipeline uh, chart are now kind of repositioned, or if you would, uh, visually as a circle because that's what it needs to be. It's going to be continuous everything. You're going to have the, you know, the planning start at the top. The DevOps analytics is a form, actually, of feedback. So there is continuous. In fact, we so important that, you know, I put it in the center here, continuous feedback to all of these different uh, nodes, if you would, are, are absolutely essential because you're not going to be doing uh, big bang code drops. You're not going to be doing, you know, big release drops. You're going to be doing small ones. And so for that to happen and to not have the, the house burning down when you pass it over to, you know, ops and they push it out to production, you know, you have to have the tight integration. You have to have the automated kind of uh, testing so that you're eliminating waste and that this whole cycle can start to be executed, you know, in, in days and even hours. Um, and it takes, it's not just tools, you know, a lot of times I'm uh, talking to different uh, groups or different customers and they think, oh, okay, so tell me what software tools I go get and then I got DevOps. Nope. Uh, it, and it's not, you, you know, like idle. G give me your process diagram and we'll go implement it and then we'll have DevOps. Nope, not that either. What it's turning out to be is really the culture and here's where you as students, you know, can really help because, you know, as, as you get older, like myself, you get kind of uh, ingrained in your ways. Change is always hard, particularly in large organizations. Um, so companies that are understanding that they are a software business, they are interested in your skills and particularly because, you know, you're, you grew up in this kind of born on the, on the cloud, you know, fast kind of uh, development environment. You can help, you know, help drive the change in the culture that needs to happen. Uh, but that's where we internally, because we're adopting this internally, the, uh, the rational products, here's their, uh, some of the results. So they've been working on this. It, this isn't a new ID either. I don't have time to share all the history. But I mean, DevOps isn't something that just recently popped up. It's just that uh, we have a conflict of things coming together, particularly the technology is there to actually enable this. We had the concept of concept, uh, con concurrent engineering way, way long ago, but the problem was is that you really didn't have the technology to do all of the automated and the integration uh, that you would like to have seen in what was meant by concurrent engineering. We have that today, but this is uh, rational. Um, they're cloud-hosted products. What's, their cl what's an example of their cloud-hosted products? Well, internally, we called it DevOps you know, as a service. But then when we released it, it's called Jazz Hub. So 
Jazz Hub is uh, one of these uh, hosted products that allows, you know, um, instead of getting the traditional products, install it and all the licensing, etc. This is a pay-as-you-go kind of model. And so they have to keep up. They, they now have a bigger, you know, customer uh, set. They have a much different profile of customers, right? Because usually we're dealing with enterprise kind of businesses. Now we're dealing with, you know, all kinds of um, students like yourself or small startups, et cetera. So all different kinds of feedback. And you see the kind of uh, improvements they're making. I mean, pretty dramatic, um, especially as you get down to, you know, this was um, uh, not even being done in 2008, and, and that's a beta version, a beta verification test availability. Didn't even make it available through a uh, beta. Just threw it over the wall to, uh, you know, it wouldn't be to operations, but basically throw it over the wall to fulfillment, stamp the uh, disks, and out to the market. So, you know, very costly when you got errors there. So that's why you do DevOps, or at least one example of some of the benefits. Other customers are obviously uh, enjoying some of those benefits as well. But rather than, uh, you know, do a demo, don't have time to do a demo, say on what are some of these uh, technologies that underpin and enable uh, DevOps, I thought uh, the next best thing would be to bring my son, he's a computer science uh, student uh, at, um, at Saddleback, and he was involved in an internship uh, over the summer. And I had mentioned to him as I was hearing, you know, kind of, I knew what his uh, project, well, I'll let uh, Matthew tell you. So let me introduce to you Matthew Clark, and he's going to uh, share his experiences with Jazz Hub and uh, Bluemix um, from, you know, his uh, personal experience. Thanks. <clears throat> so just a little bit of background about how I got into all this. Uh, I basically, my school partnered with a company called New Desic, and they were offering uh, an internship and uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, achieve, uh, you know, get that internship and I ended up being faced with having to develop a uh, web application that connects uh, self-employed tutors to students in just about six weeks. So uh, I needed a way to get started quickly and I had no ex real ex experience with front-end web development so uh, getting started quickly and being and uh, being able to uh, understand it easily was very important to me um, and so I had happened to be a blue mix beta member and I had seen how uh, you know they're advertising the quick uh, development so I uh, looked more into it and it turned out to be a hugely uh, important part of my uh, development of my project and something that I use all the time for my code today so to start, uh, it's uh, pretty much all centered on Jazz Hub. So Jazz Hub is essentially a Git uh, repository, or uh, they have their own uh, SCM uh, method as well, where you can store your code. But it also has a huge suite of tools that allow you to uh, you can uh, use their built-in web IDE uh, to code uh, any, on any computer you want. Or you can um, also use a uh, integrated agile management tool that they have, which is based on Rational Team Concert. And you can also, uh, once you have got your code ready to be uh, deployed, you can automatically deploy it to Bluemix, and it'll be out on the cloud for everyone to use. So I just want to go into a little bit more on each of these. Uh, <clears throat> so a lot of people have been uh, at telling me. Well, I never heard about this Jazz Hub thing. Everybody uses GitHub nowadays, so why don't I just use GitHub instead? Well, if you uh, if you want, you can connect your GitHub account or your GitHub repository directly to Jazz Hub. That way, you can get the best of both worlds. You can use GitHub if that's what you want, and you can also use all the features that are tied into Jazz Hub. And one of those, like I said, is a uh, actually a fully featured uh, web IDE that has code highlighting and error checking and uh, uh, code uh, completion, automated completion. So it's actually a very easy to use web IDE, but if you don't want to use that, you can use your Eclipse IDE or your command line interface, whatever you want to use. Then, this is one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite features that it has. It has a built-in agile management tool so that you can, if you are working on a project with you know three to nine members or so, 
you really want to start using a uh, development method, uh, development methodology like Agile, to uh, um, uh, track and plan your progress on the project, as well as to uh, decide, you know, uh, be able to uh, deliberate the tasks between each of your team members. So this basically tells you, you know, who's doing what and when will it get done. Uh, it's gonna it's going to allow you to track your team's performance and project status over, over the sprints. Uh, so you can have your sprint planning meetings and it's all uh, in a very easy uh, to use user interface and it has great documentation as well. I, I've had a little bit of experience with Agile uh, ma uh, development but uh, going through uh, the documentation for uh, the track and plan feature on Jazz Hub, has increased my knowledge of Agile tremendously, and it turned out that that was a huge uh, benefiting factor to me getting the internship was me having a lot of knowledge of uh, Agile web development because in an actual business, that's how, uh, uh, that's how development is gonna happen. So one other feature that you have is you can uh, deploy, or you can configure your builder, and for one of the most popular builders is Grunt. Um, so that's the one that I use. You can figure that however you want, and when you put, when you build and push the Bluemix, it's automatically going to run all your test scripts. It's automatically going to uh, build your code and generate logs if there's errors. And so this is a this is a major um, reason why Jazz Hub and Bluemix together are essentially giving you the tools to practice DevOps. You're going to be able to use continuous integration every time you push your code to Bluemix, it's going to automatically deploy and run your build scripts and your tests and, and that's essentially what DevOps is. So just a, uh, so Bluemix is the uh, operation side essentially and uh, it's a platform as a service that is based off of a Cloud Foundry uh, open source platform. So uh, you can uh, bring any Cloud Foundry compatible build pack um, to Bluemix and they also have tons of IBM uh, build packs that they have created to get you up and running. So my web app is built in, in Node.js and they have a Node.js SDK that made it really easy for me to get started and, and get my uh, project into a, a prototype phase in just six weeks after having almost no experience. So that's, that's the benefit of connecting your code with, uh, through Jazz up to Bluemix and then obviously it's out on the web and the <coughs> in the cloud, uh, reachable from anywhere across the world. Uh, so this is, uh, this is a great picture that kind of shows how, uh, how DevOps is happening once everything is connected. So you can see that you have your, your team collaboration with your agile management tool and you're doing your tracking and your collaboration and your planning and once you uh, have decided something, you're going to uh, push the code from your whichever IDE you want to use, the web IDE, Eclipse, or a command line interface. Push that to either your GitHub, uh, your uh, Jazz Hub repository, or GitHub repository. And then that's going to uh, get pushed to the builder, which is going to uh, build it and test it and then run it. And it's going to be pushed over to the Bloom mix side of things. And uh, that's where you're going to get all these runtimes and frameworks, like the one I just mentioned, the Node.js SDK. And uh, it has uh, middleware already in there, and uh, many uh, application services are, and operational services like uh, MongoDB or MySQL databases are all tied in to Bluemix already. So that then you can take these APIs and services and bring them down into your code and develop faster and uh, quicker than you ever could before. And then, so this uh, just keeps going in a cycle all, all the time so that you have continuous integration and continuous deployment. You're releasing code more often and your code is always going to be in a releasable state, which is what my mom just uh, highlighted the importance of. So that, that's Jazz Hub and Bluemix. And uh, I don't know if we have time for maybe a couple questions. Sure. How are we doing in time? Yeah, a couple of questions. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Or if you have questions for my mom, too. Yeah. I'm sure she can answer. Happy to. All right. 
question. Okay. So um, I think you both kind of made the same uh, uh, point, which is, um, you know, in speeding up software development and the continuity of the process, part of it is a, a culture change. So Thank bringing you. in young folks like this is one way to do it, but I'm curious based on your experience if there are other ways to kind of uh, encourage culture change uh, in, in an organization. Yep, um, so let me just take this. So I'll repeat it just for the, uh, the stream. So the question was is uh, with young people, the change may happen more rapidly, but uh, for you know, more established uh, firms with maybe uh, you know, uh, folks that have been with several years of service, how do you get those behaviors to uh, change? It, it takes a lot from the top down, I will, I'll tell you that, because you've got to get your management on board. And Danny Saba probably is the biggest uh, advocate who's the head of you know, uh, software group and driving all of software to practice. You know, not just go out and do the marketing campaign, but you guys got to practice DevOps to produce the products. And then, you know, uh, we, we do have resources that actually put together, if you would, uh, workshops or boot camps, you know, to take them through. And, and you can start with small things. Um, there's actually an article uh, on how do you um, shift, we call it shift left uh, testing or shift left uh, integration. Those are usually what people start with first because that's where a big savings is and it's kind of uh, easier to get the change starting there than to tackle others. So we've actually built a, um, uh, um, an adoption model, if you would, and you can assess your maturity. So we'll work with a group, assess their maturity, decide what their goals are, what they want to start with. But really, to keep the, um, the nose to the grindstone, it's that top down, and obviously your performance <laughs> is tied. You get, that's how you get compensated in IBM, is with uh, your performance, me meeting your performance measure. So thanks for that. Yes? I have, I have a question regarding uh, Jazz Hub. Okay. I was wondering how long it's been used for, like in release date, and if, um, it, like how many users have used um, Jazz Hub and found like stuff they want to add to it? Are there like open sources online where like open source developer can contribute or yeah, offer so, suggestions? So I think uh, Jazz Hub has been going for about two years now. It was in beta for a while and then just uh, probably this year or last or maybe early, uh, late last year was uh, released uh, from beta. So there are a, a lot of uh, users that are putting their open source software on Jazz Hub because of, mainly because of these features and they want to connect to Bluemix and stuff like that. But uh, like I said, uh, you don't have to have your code on Jazz Hub. So a lot of people uh, have their code on GitHub because that's where they started. So they already had their code on GitHub. They had you know, many contributors from GitHub uh, contributing to their open source project. But then they uh, in connect their uh, GitHub repository to Jazz Hub and uh, that's how they uh, use the Agile management tool and Bluemix to you know, further their uh, dev dev development uh, procedure, essentially. Cool. Thanks. Great. Yep. Thank you, Ness.